Hey everybody, I just wanted to record a quick video showing how loops work because it can be a little confusing. So um, specifically I want to talk about loops and I also want to talk about debugging because debugging is a, an extremely powerful tool in coding and it's really useful for loops. It's very very useful for loops. I think it's the best example of when to show debugging I think because you know, that way you can see what your code is doing on each iteration. Okay, so with that out, out of the way, let's just jump right into it. So, there's two different kinds of loops in Python. There's a for loop, and then there's a while loop, right? We kind of already know that. But what, do they, what does that even mean? Like, what is, what is a for loop, and what is a while loop? Like, when are they used? What's the, what's the difference between them? So, a for loop is... A really useful loop if you want to iterate through a specific set list of things so for example if I have a list of employee names and I want to go through all the names and see which ones match I can create a for loop to go through that list because once it reaches the end of the list it's gonna stop itself and that's a really good thing Whereas a while loop, you could theoretically make a control variable and use a while loop to do such a thing, but it's kind of cleaner just to write a for loop because while loops are a little bit less readable for us. So um, a while loop on the other hand though, is it really shines in the sense of a while loop may not necessarily have an end condition. So for example, I could just say, while true print 5 and then what's going to happen is it's going to print the number 5 forever like I can't even scroll fast enough because it's just going to keep printing 5 until we just control C it and then you know then it stops because we manually stop the loop but it would have printed forever, like it could have printed until the end of time, because it would have never ended. Whereas with a for loop, you can't necessarily do that, because with a for loop, it's going to print, you know, for example here we have the string variable that represents the word word, right? And what this for loop is going to do is it's going to print every single letter in that word. So it's going to say... It's going to say W and it's going to say, okay, I'm going to print that and then O, I'm going to print that, R, I'm going to print that and D, I'm going to print that. And then when it gets to D, it's going to say, oh, we ran out and then stop, right? Because that's the end of the string. So if we go over here and we clear out our console so I can show you, see, it's just going to print WRD, right? I know that's kind of obvious, but I just wanted to show you visually what I mean. And so you can set conditions on this. So let's say the first letter starts with W. Um, let's say I want to change the entire word to be lowercase. Now we know with the string method we could easily just do dot lower here and then you know that would fix that right? See it printed out the same thing even though this starts with a capital W. But let's say I want to make my life really difficult um, just for the sake of showing you what the loop is actually doing. Let's say we could say print lower right? So in each thing it's going to print the exact same thing here so in this case what the code is doing is it's looking at each letter and it's saying okay whatever letter it is I'm going to convert that letter to lower so this was a capital W so it gets lower cased into lowercase w and then the rest of it was already lower so it doesn't have to do that but it probably forced it on them anyway but the first one it definitely changed but now let's introduce conditional statements to show you even more and then I can show you what debugging does. So let's take, let's say that we change this back to a bigger word. Let's say, let's make it testing, okay? Now, actually let's say testing one, two, three. So let's say for each, and instead of letter here, we're gonna say for each character in the string, we want to, and it, by the way, when you're writing a for loop, this doesn't actually matter. There are Python conventions that it's like, that are used. So usually you use I if it's a number or S if it's a string or something. But 
I think it would de- just kind of depends on like you know pep aid and lending and all that but you can use whatever if for learning python i would highly recommend using good words and, and like things here because it'll really help your brain like understand what you're doing because if i just write like for s and string f- like s meaning string so for string and string for substring and string because t here is a string by itself it because a string is kind of like a list of a bunch of substrings all mashed together so I could say like for s and string but who knows what the heck that means if I show someone if I show a five-year-old this code they're not gonna know what the heck that means so I could say for character and string each character in this string we're gonna do stuff right it's just a quick note I just want to go over that real quick anyway back to what I was saying so we could make a conditional here we could say and I'll space it out for cleanliness we could say like if character is digit which basically is saying if it's a number in this case it would only activate on the last three then I want to print character plus is a digit right and then if character and then well actually since there's only letters and numbers and the only other letters are just lowercase or whatever anyway we could literally just say else here just to make this a little bit easier to write so we could say else print character plus is not a digit right and then when we print this watch what happens so I'm gonna go ahead and clear my console out we're gonna print it and we're gonna say, oh whoops no module name curses excuse me oh I freaking must have typed something in it it must have auto filled some kind of thing to import something whoops okay character oh I didn't put a space that explains it okay sorry whoopsie guys my bad there you go so T is not a digit E is not a digit S is not a digit T is not a digit I is not a digit N is not a digit G G is not a digit but one two and three is a digit right so you can see what the code is doing on each iteration it's looking at the letter and then it's saying okay is it a digit no okay print this and then is it a digit no okay print this that's what it's doing but let me show you this let me show you this with debugging now this code is pretty easy to read and understand what it's doing but some loops you write might not be so easy to understand so let's show you a really powerful tool here so let me just go ahead and clear out my console here so you see this arrow up here where we like would click play you might have noticed there's also a debug here and what the heck does that mean well debugging is a whole thing in and of itself we're not going to really go over like all of debugging because it's just so comprehensive it could be like its own entire lecture but really I want to talk about specifically I want to talk about like continuing your code at breakpoints so you can see what it's doing iteration by iteration so let's make some breakpoints you might have also noticed there's these little red dots you can add here and this is when it's helpful to know for debugging so I'm gonna add a breakpoint here and what this is gonna do is when my code gets to this line for my first breakpoint it's gonna stop so it's gonna go ahead and execute up until this and this is gonna all happen in like microseconds so it's gonna be extremely fast but it's gonna execute all this crap up here and then it's gonna stop and normally if you were to just like if I commented out all these lines like say I got rid of all this Python would yell at me and say hey you didn't put anything in this for loop but debugging kind of stops that process of yelling at you temporarily so that because there's a breakpoint here because it, there, it knows that there's more stuff that's gonna happen so it's because not like it ended the file like it's not like the whole file cuts off after this line so we know that there is more stuff here so Python isn't gonna yell at me when it when it stops on that line okay so let's go ahead and do this let's say debug and it's really that simple you just click debug and then I want you to pay attention to how it like highlighted this line this is where it stops at so whatever line it's highlighted on that's where it stopped at now before we do literally anything else I want to show you up here there's a there's a panel up here called variables 
and uh, we don't have to worry about the special variables really specifically just the character and the string so character is here it's saying the current character that we're on in our loop right now is t which makes sense because that's the beginning of the loop and then the string is this because see i know this is kind of like obvious because i'm literally showing you what string is but imagine if this was like if our loop was like x is equal to 5 and then every iteration we multiply x by like the 10th exponent you know like that would get pretty big pretty quick and it's not so simple to just say okay x is 5 now x is 10 now x is like 15 because that would be a huge number of 5 to the 10th you know power and then after that again to the 10th power and again to the 10th power it would be an extremely big number so you know we can't just like mentally figure out what this variable is if we're changing it on each iteration so this is why it's good to be able to like have this tracked for you so you don't have to like try to keep all this stuff in your mind basically okay so let's pay attention I want you to pay attention to this variable and I also want you to direct your attention to my mouse up here Do you see this little play looking icon that kind of looks like the it's like a pause play button I'm sure there's a word for that I just can't think of the name but anyway what this does is it's gonna continue from this line down to this line so we're gonna say for example now what the loop is doing is it's saying okay is the character a digit no if it isn't then we're gonna jump here so when I click this line it's gonna jump over to else whoops I didn't add a breakpoint here or something I can't seem to add a break okay well I guess you can't add it on else statements but anyway so it's gonna jump probably to the print I would imagine then yeah so now what the code is currently said is it said okay we've evaluated if it's a digit it's not a digit so it's an else so now we're going to do this, but notice it hasn't actually done this yet because if you look at our output, we haven't printed anything out to the console. So let's go ahead and skip to the next iteration and now it finished with the T. So now we're on E. That's what your loop is doing every single time in a for loop. So now let's go ahead and do this. So is E a digit? No, we're going to jump to print. And then when I go to the next frame, boom, it prints E. So this is like a really 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 simple example but that's a good way of explaining like what it's doing specifically you know and you can use this for like your camel case functions and like other things when you're trying to convert strings into other formats and date formats and number formats and and you can do this for more than just strings you can do this for lists or you know like basically anything that you can iterate through that is when to use a for loop and when it's good now on the other hand, let's go ahead and stop this because I don't really, you know, we kind of know what's going on. I kind of showed you this already. I don't want to waste your guys' time too much. But let's say like we have a while loop here, right? So let's say, um, let's go ahead and import random in here because I want to show kind of like the pig dice game. Well, actually, I don't really need to show it, I guess, because I have the pig function uh, for rolling the dice here. So notice that what I did was, I have the um, where's my dice roll here play turn is that what it is okay so my function was a little bit different than a lot of people's I didn't do like I didn't set my score to zero I just created an empty list and put stuff in the list so if you rolled the five it would put a five in here and then a four it would put a four in there and then if you rolled a three it'd put a three in here and then another five it'd put a five and even if you rolled a one it would go ahead and put the one in there but once it rolls one it would stop the loop and say okay well you rolled a one so you know you suck or whatever but basically that's kind of what it did and then my score actually figuring out the score is just taking the sum of that uh, whatever's in here and notice that I put the list outside of the loop because if I put the loop if I put the list inside of the loop it's gonna make the list empty every time so you would never actually add your score it would just say like if you rolled a five it'd put like a five in here but then by the time it goes around to the next loop it would roll like you know it would make your score zero even if you didn't roll a one or whatever actually you know what i am going to make a new function because i don't want to have to like debug the entire pig script just to show you what i mean but let's do that real quick i'm going to say import random We'll do this kind of fast here. So import random and then we're gonna say, 
How do I want to do this? I want to make a dice roll function. So... Okay, so we're going to say while true... Sorry, I had to think about this for a minute, guys. So, while true, we're going to say... Port random. Okay, yeah, I know how I'm going to do this. So we're going to say... Random number is going to be equal to random.randint1 through 5. And actually, let's just do 1 through 4. So then we can say if random number is equal to 4, then continue. Actually, let's say... I'm sorry, I'm kind of changing how I want to do this. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to show what I'm trying to, what I'm about to do. So we're going to make an F string and we're going to say, you rolled a random number. Let's convert this to an int just to be extra safe, which is probably redundant. So you rolled a random number. So it's going to say you rolled a 4 or whatever. Do you want to roll again? Right? And uh, so we're going to say actually, you know what? We're going to set this on its own line. Okay. So we're going to say input And then make this a string, right? And then we're going to say roll again is equal to input dot lower because this is a string, so we can convert it to lower. And then we're going to say if roll again equals equals y. And I guess we should make a prompt for the user so it's not confusing. then continue if roll again is equal to no then break okay I'm sorry as it was like kind of you know confusing here but uh, how do I comment this out there it is okay cool okay I'm so sorry that took so long all right so let's move on here so now if I debug this code so we're gonna do this again I'm gonna show you debugging let me go ahead and just close out my Python console here so don't worry about the code up there just think about this and import random because that makes this work but um, so this is my loop so basically what we're gonna say is we're gonna roll a random number um, from one to four and we're gonna say print. It's gonna say you rolled a, and then it's gonna say one, two, or three, or four. And then our roll again is our variable. It's an input. So we're gonna say, do you wanna roll again? Yes or no? And if they wanna roll again, if that equals y, then continue, which means we're gonna go all the way up to the beginning of the loop. But if they say no, we're gonna break. So I wanna show you guys literally word for word what happens when you debug your code in each loop. So iteration by iteration. So it said I rolled a one when I first started. So we're gonna say, do I wanna roll again? Yes. Now watch what happens. Currently we are on this breakpoint. So let me go ahead and make some breakpoints here. So I wanna show you guys, actually let me just debug this this way with the breakpoints. I forgot to put my breakpoints in there for you guys. Okay, so now we rolled, so we've we stopped here, we've initialized our loop, and we've stopped here, so let's go ahead and go to the next frame. So our random number we rolled is 2. So this is a print, and it's going to say you rolled a 2, and it's going to print right here. You rolled a 2. Now we're at the input line, so we're going to say do you want to roll again? 
and I've executed that line so now it's waiting for me to say yes or no I'm gonna say yes now we we say okay did the user say yes and that's where we're at right now and it looks like I did so we're gonna say okay they said yes what do we want to do next we want to continue continue means start the loop over again which I know sounds a little confusing because it's like continue sounds like it would mean let's continue on but actually continue means let's continue the loop like let's continue to start like starting the loop over I think that's kind of poorly worded and I'm not really the best to explain it myself but that's just know that continue means to start over here so it's gonna go back up here so now we're gonna go back up here and we're gonna say okay now what are we gonna roll it looks like we rolled a three this time so it's gonna say you rolled a three yep and now it's gonna ask me for my input I'm gonna say yes again and again it's gonna say okay did he say yes and then yep he did continue boom back up to the top now for the sake of you know fun let's say I don't want to roll again here so let's say I roll a two again so it's gonna say you rolled a two see I rolled two three two now do I want to roll again no now notice the loop doesn't end just yet because we haven't it's still trying to figure out if we typed yes or no so did we type yes then no okay did we type no then you know okay we did type no so it's gonna break so what break means is it's gonna print um, we're gonna say like loop is finished here because when what break means is we're gonna break out of this whole loop right here so once we do this we're gonna say okay and then of course it didn't print it because you know I typed it after we already executed the code but theoretically though if I would have started with this like let's go ahead and clear our console and let's run our code here and let's say okay you rolled a whatever right so real quick here you rolled a four do you want to roll again no okay did they say yes nope they didn't did they say no yes they did okay break and then loop is finished right so I don't BS code come on okay so that's how that's how debugging works you just put these little red dots on each section that you and you don't I don't have to do it on each one like if I already knew I was gonna hit a no to test this I could just skip this breakpoint here it could just go straight to in if I wanted to but I just want to show you the breakpoints in every line of the loop so you can see exactly what your code is doing your code is like a recipe you know like it's just like following a recipe like it's just going down and it's saying okay let's roll a number and let's store it as a variable and then we can say okay you rolled a whatever this variable is you rolled a four or something and then okay do you want to roll again let's convert that to lowercase whenever they type it so let's say okay does this equal whatever they type did they equal y and I really should have put like an else I don't understand or something but you know because you could just type literally anything else and it would break the code but you know anyway so and actually I should have made this an elif statement because you know that's also important so we could say like else print I don't understand and then let me put an f string actually you know what I don't need to put an f string you could just say please type y or n right and then continue uh, except the only problem with this part is that it would go all the way up to the beginning of the loop so you know do with that information what you will but you know anyway so that's kind of like you know assuming we didn't have this exact but this is like how you would say okay let's try to roll again so you might make like a while loop inside of your loop you know here but anyway so that's how a loop works so basically you're just printing like each individual section of your loop so um, you're just kind of like going through and you're seeing what your value is you're iterating through each little iteration and as you go through each iteration you're deciding what you want to do and that's how your code is working so let's go ahead and uncomment out this thing here and let me show you again how to debug I want to show you one more time how to debug a for loop because it's also important I don't need to comment that line there okay so again let's show you how I did that so let's go ahead and clear our console and close this out so let's say debug right and then 
we're gonna say okay for character and string then is the character a digit well the current le var uh, value of the character variable is a t so t is not a digit because a digit would mean like one two three four five all that stuff so it's not numeric so okay it's not a digit okay so print character is not a digit and then boom right is the character a digit no actually i can get rid of this breakpoint here and then we'll say e is not a digit okay and then just kind of keep going forward like is it a digit no else print that is it a digit no else print that in this case it is a digit so now we're going to say print the current character which is one plus is a digit which by the way you can use an f string here and that will make your life so much easier it'll, it'll it's such cleaner code to use f strings i i swear it is see so it's the same thing like if i type this now it'll print the exact same thing of course i changed it mid loop so you know there is that but again i can go ahead and show you if i clear the console watch what happens when it gets to one. Oh, sorry i still have my breakpoints whoops sorry guys i keep doing that so let's go ahead and run and see notice it does the same thing like g1 is a digit right so i can just replace that but anyway so right so same thing you know anyway so that's how loops work like it's pretty straightforward you know it's like i mean i know it sounds it's a little confusing when you're like looking through it but debugging is super helpful so again how to debug your code step one Go to your whatever you want to break the code at so wherever you want to like make it pause so these are like your pause points I want it to pause here right and then step two we go over here we say debug Python file up on this little near your play button right or I think you can also right click and debug up here uh, in some cases actually it might be up here I think there was another run and debug there was another place you can do it, but I can't remember where it was in VS Code. But anyway, so yeah, so step two, I don't want to, can we just, there we go. Okay, step two is debug, right? A little drop down and debug. So first, step one, put your breakpoint. Step two, debug. Step three, you know, look at your variables and see what they're evaluating to currently. And then step four, okay, look at where your current highlighting is say okay is our variable this condition no then print this can be super helpful if your code isn't doing what you want it to do or if you want to figure out like what is it actually doing each iteration without making a bunch of print statements you know like in this case I'm just printing it out so it's kind of obvious but what if I didn't have print statements here like what if I said okay if the character is a digit then character times five like or times four right so then okay so this is going to be like 4 8 and 12 so that's fine but i'm not printing that variable out so i don't know what that is right so let me just debug it again now so we could go ahead and skip on through because it won't get to that until right now right so now okay character times one and then see now that value is f like four but of course, you know, it helps if you make a variable for it. So we could say x is equal to that. And then let's just go here and I'll show you. Hang on. So x is equal to character times four. So we're gonna print x here. For some reason, VS Code is not including my extra x here for whatever reason. I cannot figure out why.
Okay, there we go. So apparently VS Code only shows you the variable if it's relevant in that moment. And of course, by the way, since character's a string, it's not going to print 4, it's going to print 1111. But anyway, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so that's how you know like what your variables are doing. You can look over here and see what your current variables are doing. In this case, VS Code is a little bit confusing because it doesn't show me every variable until it's actually like going to be used, which is nice, I guess. Um, so I guess it's just showing you what active variables are currently being used at near, near your breakpoints, which is kind of useful here, but yeah, it's a little confusing. So sorry about that, but it's okay. We learned together. So anyway, so that's all I'm going to, you know, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to go any further on this because I think this video is like way too long, but you know, hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you know how to debug now. So um, that's how loops work and that's how to debug and if you have any other questions about how loops work or anything else please just feel free to send me a question here and I'll, we'll go from there okay all right I'll see you guys later thanks so much for watching bye bye